Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. By Tri-County Logging, experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. The first four-sided box call of its kind, Four Play Turkey Call. Our patented design produces unique sounds that work well with call shy birds. Four different sound rails with lid movement along each rail for multiple tones. Take your calls to the next level with a Four Play Turkey Call. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got a great show lined up for you this week. I'm gonna take you out in the woods to show you a wild edible plant that you may not know about here in Michigan. We'll show you where to find it and how to harvest it and even how to cook it up. You won't wanna miss that story. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other springtime excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We're gonna kick things off on this week's show with my turkey hunt. Now the last couple of years, I've taped myself turkey hunting, which is always fun, but it's much better to bring a camera Cameraman along, so Jordan was along for the hunt and he captured some unbelievable footage. You won't want to miss that story if you're a turkey hunter. And then we're going to show you what goes into stocking Lake Michigan with salmon. Recently, the Grand Haven steelheaders, along with the Grand Rapids steelheaders, planted some fish in Lake Michigan with the cooperation of the DNR, of course, and it's always fun to see sportsmen and women and the DNR working together. Really cool stuff on this week's show. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze. Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. Yeah, well, we are here in South Haven, Michigan, and we are, our plan was to do a cast and blast, do a little fishing and then some turkey hunting in the morning. But the uh, we had to make the call around 1 or 2 o'clock, and at that point they said the waves were building, and so we called off the fishing. We might have been able to get out. It's still pretty rough, but uh, better to be safe than sorry. But we are going to be doing some turkey hunting in the morning with a good buddy, Grant Gully, who lives around here. We've hunted with him on the show before. Really fun guy. We're going to go scout some birds right now and then uh, go out and get some food and Fingers crossed, I'm fine. I've got this late tag in my pocket and uh, I'm excited to get in the woods tomorrow. Let's 
season is it? The sun slowly rose in the sky with some distant gobbles, but nothing very close. We did have one bird behind us that was answering the calls from time to time, and it sounded like he might be heading our way. After a few series of calls, he was headed our way. Now we waited to see where he would pop out and if he had hens with him or not. Well, that is the first. <laughs> what happened? I, I pulled the trigger. The gun didn't go off. I put the safety back on. Took the safety off. 
nothing. Racked a shell, nothing happened. Racked another shell, that one came out, and I saw the third shell go into the chamber. I, I don't know, I mean, he came out, it was perfect, and I, I figured he was gonna shoot, and then he didn't, and then I, every time the bird would turn, I'd see him move the gun, and then you heard the clicks, and I'm going, you know, what, what, what is he doing? And then, <laughs> and then the bird would turn, and he, he moved the gun again, and I'm like, why didn't you shoot it? He's right here. <laughs> and uh, then I see him rack a shell out, I went, oh no. And then he racked again, and then he finally shot it. <laughs> in 10 yards. Well, it ended up being a problem. Well, a couple different firsts on this hunt. Uh, I've never had my gun not go off. I gotta see what happened there. I, don't, I loaded it at the truck. I thought everything was fine. Um, <laughs> trying to rack the gun a couple times and the bird's right there, that was the first. And typically when we're taping like this, we try to set the decoys pretty close. They're at about 10 paces from us. So when you're using a turkey load uh, at 10 yards, that pattern is about the size of a golf ball. And so on this hunt here, typically I'll aim lower than I would if the bird was at 25, 35, 45 yards. Aim pretty low on the neck. And on this one, it was the most humane kill I've ever seen. It actually, that pattern was so small, it actually took the head right off the bird. It was a clean kill. Never seen that happen before, but um, as part of the hunt, it was a good ethical shot and a beautiful bird and couldn't be more happy. Well, we get this quite a bit on the show, people saying, well, you guys never pick up your brass, and we usually do, we just don't always tape that, so we wanna make sure that we did this this time, but whether you're pheasant hunting, turkey hunting, especially when you're on somebody else's property like we are today, it's always good to clean up after yourself, it's just the right thing to do. And if you're out there hunting and you see somebody else's burnt brass or whatever, just pick it up, it's always a good thing just to be, try to leave the places you know, better than you found it. Well, as you can probably tell, that was a rather unique story to be sure. Uh, some great footage, but really it was, I was very fortunate that the bird was so fixated on those decoys that he wasn't paying attention to me fumbling around with a gun trying to get a shell into the chamber. But thanks to everyone that was involved on that hunt. What we're gonna do now is head from South Haven, slide up the coast to Grand Haven and show you what goes into stocking Lake Michigan with Chinook salmon. Every other year, there is quite a program here in the state of Michigan where the DNR, along with local sport fishing groups, help stock Lake Michigan with salmon. I was able to follow that process along here in Grand Haven. The Grand Rapids Steelheaders and the Grand Haven Steelheaders are getting together to help put the fish in. The 250,000 salmon that are coming from the Wolf Lake Hatchery into the net pins behind me right here. There's going to, because of a problem with one of the trucks, there's going to be three trucks coming instead of just one big one. So it's going to be, this will be a continuation for the next two to three hours. We're doing this to increase and enhance the fishing for all anglers in Lake Michigan. Uh, some of the fish will go upstream. It, it may help with the salmon runs like in Grand Rapids, for example. Uh, but we, uh, this is really going to benefit the big lake anglers two to three years down the road. And the importance of these net pins is because of the depth out here, the depth. They're getting acclimated to deeper water. In the raceways at the Wolf Lake Hatchery, they're used to less than two feet. And they're prime candidates then for ducks, seagulls, cormorants. It's always good to see the DNR and fishermen working side by side to improve our sport fishery. Paul Zelenka is one who told me about this project, which I have heard about but never really got to see in person. To maintain the uh, fishery that started back in the 60s, they plant the fish every single year. Um, and Grand Haven has been uh, uh, fortunate to uh, get fish through most of the process. And uh, right now we get them every other year. And uh, this year we were planning on getting about 90,000 and the state called us and said, we're gonna give you 130. And then they call us back again and said, no, we're gonna give you a quarter of a million. So uh, we uh, jumped through some hoops, got all, all of our nets uh, uh, put together. We do this in conjunction with the Grand Rapids steel headers. Um, they own the nets with us and help us maintain them. So we had a work day a couple weeks ago. We hung all the nets from boom and fixed them up, cleaned them up. Um, but the nice part is uh, three years from now, we should have an awesome run of uh, uh, 
fish coming down uh, or coming back up the river uh, as these guys return to the Grand. So getting them in here does a couple things. It uh, imprints them to the river so that they'll return for their run. Um, it also uh, acclimates them to deeper water uh, instead of living in the uh, hatchery in relatively shallow water. Um, and uh, kind of gets them used to staying away from predators like birds and pike and that type of stuff. Once the fish are here, the real work begins with multiple daily feedings. They eat uh, 55 pounds of feed per day with this quantity of fish, and we feed them three times a day, morning, noon, and night. Three times a day? Three times a day. Well, they don't get 55, they have to get 55 pounds for the entire day. So about 17, 18 pounds per feeding. Okay. The fish were anywhere between two to three inches on the small side and five or six inches for the larger ones, but they do grow quite a bit in these two weeks. I think they grow about 15 to 20 percent um, from what they were. So uh, when we planted them a week and a half ago, I think the average size was about three to four inches. You know, they were about like that. And then uh, uh, they'll, like I said, they'll put on yeah, a good 10 to 15 percent body weight and yep. length. After a few weeks in the pens, the Wolf Lake Hatchery sends out some biologists. In this case, it was Sadie Halleck and Alexa Curtis to look at the fish and take lots of measurements to make sure these fish are healthy enough to be released back into the system. So we're just doing a fish um, quality assessment. So we're making sure the fish are healthy before they release. We're looking at their eyes, their gills, um, whether they're smolting or not. And then we do 20 internals where we look at their um, liver, their kidneys, and all that, just to make sure they're nice and healthy before we release them. Okay. Lots of fish were measured and cataloged, and the number that was floating around the docks was about 10% of these fish will survive, which is a better number than I was thinking. But if that's right, that's over 25,000 fish that will potentially make it in to Lake Michigan and be there for anglers to catch. So we're looking at how much of the pyloric seca we can see here, which are all these little lines and assessing the amount of fat that there is. Um, so I would say that's a three. So over 50% of the pyloric seek are covered. And we're going to look at their spleen, which is this little organ right here, this red guy. Hmm. The spleen is red. Looks like a male. So right here in the swim bladder, there's this long, looks like a vein that goes from here. You can follow it down. So I would call that a male. His liver right here. Looking for any abnormalities, I would say that's normal and red. I was really impressed with all the volunteers that make this happen. Feeding three times a day for two weeks is no small task. All the work that the folks at the hatchery do to get them to this point and get them here to these pens, well, to see the DNR and fishermen working together, it is a good thing. So when you land that big king this summer, well, you now know just maybe who to thank. Most people here in Michigan have heard of the wild morel mushroom, something you may not have heard of that's also harvestable and edible this time of year all across the state is a wild ramp. It's a type of wild onion and it is delicious. We're gonna go out ramp hunting. Uh, ramps are also known as wild leeks. Some people call wild garlic, wild onions. They're all part of the Allium family. These are technical name is Allium trichocum. Trichocum, I'm sorry. Um, all in the same family as onions, leeks, garlic, shallots. Joining us today were Mike's son, Nathaniel Bennett, who would be running a drone and camera for his YouTube channel, and landowners Jeff and Pam Polonis, who are still exploring everything this land of theirs has to offer. Well, let's see, we uh, bought this property back in October, so uh, just over six months. And we've, uh, we've been hunting deer, turkey, and uh, the spring looking at all the beautiful flowers coming up. And uh, Pam's been uh, getting on these pages for uh, foraging. foraging and stuff. And we identified the ramps and started using them to cook with our potatoes and drying some out. And, Ramp uh, pesto. Oh. It's awesome. <laughs> but uh, it, we found out, you know, we've got it all over the property. So it's been a lot of fun harvesting it and using it, different things. It's 
we're lucky to have our own property to be able to forage them. Awesome. And do you dig them up or are you just cutting the leaves? Mostly we just cut the leaves. I, I dug up this year probably enough bulbs to do uh, a couple jars of pickled ones, but we want to make sure that we don't deplete the resource, so we're always very careful about what we dig up. We can see, you see, get down underneath, you can see the, 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 the red stalks, and if you look, you can actually see the bulbs here. There's some bulbs coming through here. But yeah, see, uh, so when they're bulbs like this, you can literally just pick them off. And to clean them, you just slide. There's a, an outer skin there. A lot of people literally cut the, the roots away. I just pinch them off. But this one here, you just, they, well, these actually only have one leaf, but you just pluck a leaf. And you can take really, normally there's two to three leaves on each stalk. And you notice these are a lot of singles here, unless they've already split. But you just take one to two, you know, one leaf off each one, and it's sustainable that way. You can take a whole basketful if you wanted to. Conservation is key to maintaining a good population of wild ramps. Mike says there are certain areas where they grow best. They generally are found in open hardwoods with good drained soil heavily composted of leaves, deciduous leaves. You're not gonna find them in pines. They do not tolerate pines. You want good, good drainage. I mean, wet ground is not good because it's a bulb that lives under the ground. So they will basically get drowned or rot, you know. What do you look for then when you're looking around? What's a, where should people look? Generally, it's the first green that comes up in the spring. It's a very, it's a, uh, a long leaf, six to eight inches long usually has a green a red stalk about two inches wide uh, linear veins in the leaves there are look-alikes they have to be careful of well, can you okay. tell by just breaking a leaf and smelling it oh yes oh yes they smell strongly of onion okay. they're going to smell strongly of onion and garlic many times if it's a large patch you'll smell the patch if you're downwind of them you know uh yeah, if you break a leaf and it doesn't smell like onions or garlic it's a good one it's not wild leeks or, or ramps. These ramps have a great taste that's best described as a blend of onion and garlic. We did come across a look-alike plant on our way to the next patch. This here looks similar. Looks very similar to ramps, okay? But this is actually trout lily, okay? But like I said, it, it's a very similar looking leaf, but you see the splotches on there. If you're interested in hunting and harvesting these wild onions known as ramps, there are some rules and regulations to be aware of. In Michigan, they cannot be harvested off of public public lands. Um, state land, federal forests, uh, you know, uh, the national forests, they're protected in those lands. Um, you can only harvest them on private property. Well, there are several different ways of harvesting. And a lot of people pick just leaves, um, you can go along and just pick one leaf off of each plant, or if you are conservative about it and just harvest a few here, a few there, you can harvest the actual whole bulb, which there's a you know, whole bulb underneath the ground, which you'll see. But you have to be very conservative because the bulbs, they actually take three to five years to grow back. And also it takes seven to 10 years for them to actually grow from seeds because the seeds actually require three freeze-thaw cycles before they germinate. So you have to be, like I said, very conservative wow. on, how you, on how you harvest them. Uh, but ramps became an interest, you know, like I said, a couple of years ago. Um, what do I like doing with them? Uh, oh, they're great in the morning with eggs. I mean, uh, stir fry, I, I do fried rice with them. One of my favorites is sauteed with some pistachios, crushed pistachios, and tossed with pasta. That one's, that one's really, really good. Uh, can you freeze them or preserve yeah, they them? Can be, they can be frozen. Um, preferably, if you vacuum seal them and freeze them, they do keep much better. They keep very well, they dehydrate well, and you, know, uh, you can grind them up and use them for seasoning in soups, stews, chilies, whatever. I like to do a fermentation. But kind of like sauerkraut, take the bulbs, put them in a quart jar, 
and cover them with a two to two and a half to three percent brine and just let them set. There are so many wonderful ways to enjoy these flavorful ramps. Today, Mike whipped up one of his favorite pasta dishes for us to enjoy. Special thanks to Jeff and Pam for sharing their land and resources with us, and to Mike and Nate for showing us how to harvest these delicious plants growing right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thanks so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of springtime fun headed your way here on the show. Of course, we'll be doing some walleye fishing. We'll take you out on a couple of other springtime adventures you won't want to miss. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, of course, Jenny, online is a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website. We have full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on most of the social media sites if you want to see what we're doing on a more day-to-day -day basis. And if you're ever on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Coming over the next few weeks, we're going to have a little bit more turkey hunting. And as we get into the spring and even early summer fishing, so much happening in our state. Get out and enjoy it. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at GreenMarkEquipment.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, PolarCraft.com. by Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away I am a Michigan man Changing seasons paint the scene Like rainbow trout in a hidden stream The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a 